Welcome back. I'm Pat, that Halloween movie collector, and I'm back with another horror film and why we're going to discuss why it's so good. If you haven't seen the last one, I just did Halloween. Why is Halloween so good? And my next favorite franchise next to the Halloween franchise is, of course, Friday the 13th. Now, Friday the 13th, you know, there's a lot of entries, <laughs> so there's some that may be your favorite or not. Truth be told, part two is actually my favorite. But for uh, purposes of just trying to go in a sequential order, I do like the first one. Lands uh, in, in my top five. I thought, you know what, let's go through this. Because it was, for 1980, it was, it was groundbreaking. I know we're very uh, desensitized to uh, horror these days because it's just amped up. But put yourself in 1980. Put yourself with me when I was, I probably saw this around 82, 81, 82. And uh, it, was, it was shocking for that, for that time for somebody my age. So let's go through several different uh, points of, of uh, Friday the 13th from 1980. And let's uh, discuss why is Friday the 13th so good. Simplicity. It's a very simple story. Truth be told, you walked into this blindly. You wouldn't understand what the story was about till the very end, till the reveal. It's very much a whodunit. But it's a very simple story of a mother's revenge. So you, the film starts out and you don't understand what's going on here. It's 1958. There's uh, two camp counselors that are sneaking off the screw in, in, one of the, in one of the cabins, upstairs in one of the cabins, and they get killed. All right, if you hadn't seen uh, this film, if you hadn't seen anything about it, or I mean, there's no internet back then to really dissect it, you'd be like, what the hell just happened? So that's why it's very much a whodunit, because as the movie plays out, obviously you don't see who the killer is. They don't show the killer. Very little light and shadow of, of the person killing. So it, it does, um, it's a very simple story. It's, it's not very complicated, especially when you do find out why uh, she's killing. Shock value. Okay, there wasn't, I mean, there was some shocking kills for its time within the film, but Shock value is the end of the film. The shock is when you find out who is killing you, find out that his mother is killing him. They talked about the, the legend when Andy's in the diner and they're telling her you shouldn't go up there about all the shit that's been going on up there. You know, he remember he's just saying, if I was you, go home, turn around, don't go. But there's some shocking moments, especially towards the end when it's revealed who it is and and how she dies. It's shocking how towards the end she gets be she gets beheaded by Alice. Feel. This movie had there was a feeling of dread towards the end once the shit hits the fan, but it also gives you, it does give you that summertime camp feel. You really feel like you're at a camp. It's like a camp getting ready. I did a lot. I, well, I still do a lot of camping, but I did a lot of camping in my life. My son's an Eagle Scout, and we've done tons of camping, including camping at this site. We we went to we've camped several times at Camp Nobi Bosco in um, Hardwick, New Jersey, which is actually the camp that they filmed this at. So I've actually stayed in the cabins with the scouts. So it's awesome. It's cool. And actually, there's a there's a video just recently that I just uh, revisited Camp Crystal Lake, Camp Nobi Bosco, and the uh, Blairstown Diner where Steve Christie eats his last meal. So that's on this channel too. Be sure and check it out. I'll actually drop a link up here. But it does give you that feel. It gives you that summertime feel. It does give you that camping feel. So uh, they accomplished it very well. Lighting, shadows, very cool. Characters. Well, a good film has good characters, memorable characters. And of course, ho not just Halloween or Friday the 13th, every film they're going to have is going to have disposable characters because they're basically there to get killed. They're fodder for whoever the killer is in that particular film. And these characters, you know, you had uh, Ned, Stacy, uh, obviously... Um, Jack, who else am I missing? Brenda, and of course Alice and Steve Christie, and Annie, who get who's who gets killed off very early in the film. She's supposed to be going to the camp to be the cook, so, but they're all memorable characters, and you remember who they are because of their uh, significant deaths. Because at this point, they're iconic deaths. So the characters, you have memorable characters. I've watched horror films and films in general where the characters are just completely forgettable, but these characters. They're memorable. Dialogue. The film has good dialogue. It's just uh, 
just them basically prepping the camp to get ready for uh, kids to come in. And it's just, you know, matter of fact dialogue. It's like everyday dialogue. So there's nothing really cheesy. There's nothing that's uh, nothing that's very memorable. And there's nothing that's very forgettable. It's just very much good dialogue. The only dialogue that's <laughs> kind of cringy, I think, is when the motorcycle cop shows up. And he's, uh, he's uh, he looks like he's drunk. And his dialogue is like, you got to smoke and grass, you know, Maui Waui and all this other stupid shit. And that's probably the only part that had the worst dialogue in this film. But the dialogue, for the most part, was was, you know, good. Pacing. The pacing of this film was very good. It's, it, it builds and builds and builds and builds, which a horror movie should, a thriller, a slasher, however you want it, should, it shouldn't go down, right? It should start here, and it should just keep going up, keep going up, keep going up. Sometimes you have a horror film that does do a little bit of a dip for some, some reason that may be planned out because it maybe wants to catch you off your guard and then boom, it spikes right up. That's cool. But this is a steady, to me, this is a steady climb. Little by little, especially when they start, people start disappearing. They're not coming back, and she starts looking around. If everybody gets killed off, and then it's she's left all by herself. So pacing is uh, very good in this film. Atmosphere, just like I said before, the atmosphere you feel it like it's an active camp, like they're getting ready. You feel that there's scenes where you're seeing they're working and they're sweating. They're they're swimming in the lake. And you can feel that because maybe, maybe if you have never camped or you've never been to a lake before, it's hard for you. But I've done so much camping and so much camping at lakes. It, to me, it, it feels like you're actually there. And the, the big rainstorm that night, I've actually camped when it's downpoured so I can feel it. So the feeling, it, it, sometimes when you're in a film, if they don't get, get the right atmosphere, which we've already discussed, but the feeling... And it throws you out of the film because it doesn't really feel like what they're trying to convey. But they conveyed um, that this is a camp and it's summertime and you can feel the bugs. And I'm sure it's humid, especially because it's, it's going to rain like hell. It's definitely, uh, you feel that atmosphere. Lighting. It's lit very well. There's a, there's, there's a decent amount of day, day scenes, but you want more dark scenes. Darkness, things you can't see. Things are lit well. There's things in shadows. So, for all intents and purposes, the lighting in here is very, very good. Tension. There's a lot of tension because you, you're sitting through this whole film not knowing what's going on. Who this person is. And a little by little, like I said, it's building up. So now, towards the end, when Alice is on her own, she finds all the bodies. Um, and it, it, it's very tense. And now you have introduced to this other character. Mrs. Voorhees, Pamela Voorhees. And you're like, who's this person? You think, okay, now the tension lowers a little bit because now you think this woman's here to help. You're not going to realize she's the killer until she snaps and starts telling the whole story and the tension builds and builds and builds because now there's the whole fight sequence between, between them. And then the tension slows down. And then, of course, very end of the film, which is also part of the shock value, when you see that police car pull up and she is out on the lake. And then, of course, young Jason comes and jumps at her. There's that shock moment and that tense moment where you think, okay, this is it. And then, there's, of course, there's lots of arguments about this because people don't seem to understand. Like, obviously, if she got pulled in, you know, people think, is this a dream sequence or, you know, what happened? Because, obviously, if he would have pulled her under and the police were right there, they would have saw it. Very ambiguous. But, you know what? Just enjoy it for what it is. <laughs> it's not meant to be dissected like I'm doing now. And the finale, perfect finale. They left the door open for more possibilities. Sean S. Cunningham basically admitted he was trying to capitalize on what Halloween had done the year before. And how did that end? Albeit on a cliffhanger. Well, why not hang this one on a cliffhanger? Because now, you know, obviously we know Mrs. Voorhees is dead. She beheaded her. She's not coming back. But now they introduced young Jason at the last moment. And... What's the famous line from the cop? Uh, Ma'am, we didn't find any boy. Then he's still out there. Left the door wide open. And then, of course, within a year, you get my favorite entry of the franchise. Because then, from there on, it's the Jason show. So, very good ending. Surprise ending. Most of the Friday the 13th always end with that shock ending. It's like their um, M.O. But it's cool. It's great stuff. So those are my reasons why Friday the 13th is so good. I love Friday the 13th, the original. Some people may or may not 
put it at the top of their ranking. It's sort of in the middle because, like I said, it's very dated compared to all the other entries because they just went, they just amped them up, 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 and up. So you might be partial to those. Like I said, my particular, part two is my favorite, part four, part three, and then probably part the original. Uh, 1980 probably lands right around there. But it's iconic. It gave us this franchise. You can't argue it. I wish they could get on the same page and stop duking out all this legality bullshit so we get a new film. Um, you know, we get the TV series, but we want a film. We want Jason up on the screen. So hopefully they can sort this shit out. But that is why I think Friday the 13th is so good. Do me a favor. Comment below. Let me know your reasons why Friday the 13th is so good. Let me know why you think it sucks. I'm going to be doing a couple of these films where I'm sure it's going to be controversial because I'll piss somebody off that I'll talk about a movie that I think sucks and they love. But this is all subjective. It's everybody's opinion. Comment below. Let me know whether you liked it. Well, tell me know why Friday the 13th is so good or tell me tell me why it sucks. I love reading the comments. It's everybody's opinion. You know, it's a safe space for that shit. So do me a favor. Like this video. Other people will find this. And we can discuss more about all our horror classics. I'll probably be doing, an, uh, what should I do next? Maybe Nightmare on Elm Street, the OG, will be, why is Nightmare on Elm Street so good? I do have to find a film that sucks. <laughs> so, because I do have to throw a monkey wrench in and, and do a film that sucks. And there's a few horror films that I think suck. More so, maybe not the original one that launched a specific franchise or something that's iconic, but more so some of the uh, sequels of some of the franchises tends to suck. So we'll talk about a couple movies that suck. Do me a favor. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, think about subscribing. If you like this kind of content, it's tons of horror stuff here. Lots of Friday the 13th, a lot of Halloween. Yeah. And uh, we do horror podcasts. We do horror watch-alongs. We do all sorts of shit on this channel. So think about hitting that subscribe button. It'll cost nothing. And there'll be a lot more shit like this coming forward. So until then, make sure you do me a favor. Comment below. Let me know your reasons why it's good or bad or whatever. Love reading the comments, and until the next, why is it so good, I'll talk to you soon.